today on our show, I got a special guest. It's almost a solo fat man on Batman, but not quite, because we got another boy in a fat cave. What? We're going to talk to a godly person today. Right as soon as we come back, Fat Man on Batman, stay tuned. Who's that in Poison Ivy's garden? It's Kevin Smith and Mark Cordona. Two Fat Men on Batman. Hey, everybody, it's me, Mark Bernard, and Kevin Smith is not here. He's off doing Kevin Smithy stuff somewhere in the world. I don't know where. I can never keep track of him. But I got a guest, Michael Green, the co-creator and co-showrunner of American Gods and a man who was having the best year in the history of years. <laughs> Welcome to the Fat Cave, which is not the Fat Cave today. We're in We're Scum and Villainy. Scum Kevin. and Villainy. Are we allowed to say that it's loosely inspired by a film it's, you may or may not be familiar it's with? It's kind of Space Cantina-ish. There may be lasers and there, there may be some sort of foamy beverage with a frog in it for you to... Yeah, I mean, Crunch you know, after. if you're watching the show, you know what this okay. place is. You know, you know where it is. You've probably been here. And I've got, got get thee to a cantina <laughs> quickly. Um, I'm not going to stop giggling this entire time because <laughs> we, we are friendly and, and I've, I've never have seen you in person I've never doing, it on. Dur- doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you always hear those stories. Of and like, it's like you're holding the karaoke mic. So I feel like you're actually I singing. To I, I've heard those mm-hmm. stories of like Marilyn Monroe who would be out like out in the world trying to not be Marilyn Monroe and right. could kind of almost sort of disguise it. And then would say to somebody, you want to see me turn it on? And then she would just fucking like that yeah. become Marilyn Monroe. Here, here's my favorite thing about that story is you just compared yourself to Marilyn Monroe. I am. Yeah. I, I feel like I have the curves <laughs> for it. I've been building this feminine body for a while, but... You know, all right. I'm thick. Um, so, <laughs> so listen, I we're going to talk about. American I'm going to derail guys. every attempt you have at talking about actual work. Right I mean, now. I, I welcome the derailment. <laughs> uh, but okay, we're going to kind of we're going to circle back a little bit. We're okay. going to talk about American Gods. We're going to get there because absolutely we're going to talk about because American Gods. You need to watch it. You need to watch because this is going up on Friday. The finale of the first season is yes. up on Sunday. Our eight of eighth. Eighth, eighth of eight. Eight of eighth. Take that one again. Eighth, uh, is uh, going to run, and you can catch up on them, and you damn well should if you haven't seen Ocho it. of Ocho. Um, and so we're going to spoil the fuck out of it in a little bit. Not going to spoil it. Um, you know what? They, just, they showed a trailer after the seventh episode that was pretty much... We were watching it. We had all the cast, and we were tweeting, and Brian and I just looked at each other. Brian Fuller, who we run the show with, uh, who should be here if we're going to be talking about it. We'll, we'll, we'll text him. We'll be here in five. Um, <laughs> we'll we just looked at each box. other like, did they just do the whole episode? In the next? Yeah. So you can just... See the 45-second version. It's we'll, delightful. We'll pull Brian in on the view screen that we can activate in the background. Just <laughs> That would not l- surprise l- me. Lieutenant Uhura, can I patch in Brian Fuller? And just, prank. that's the wrong franchise. I know it's the wrong franchise. Fuck you. I knew that. <laughs> um, okay, so let's, let's go back to the very beginning. Let's, where, where does Michael Green begin? Oh, where does, Jesus. What is the story of Michael? The book of Michael. Oh, where does Christ. it start? I don't, can we just <laughs> jump ahead to like when I did anything interesting? We can jump ahead to Heroes yeah. if you want. Oh, sure. I Unless mean, there's other shit you want to get in there. First sexual experience. I, I, uh, oh, it was, I was terrible. Well. I was terrible. And it took I, years from like start to finish before you could actually call it like that one that counted. This I mean, is if not. It, if it took years from start to finish, I feel bad. For it was not. Uh, it, was, it was a process. <laughs> and I was not involved. <laughs> you know, it, it's, um, it turns out most of the time it's better if we're not involved. Yeah. yeah That's what Wonder that's Woman good. thinks. We're not necessary for we're pleasure. Not necessary. No, we're just we're getting in the way. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So tell me when you first knew you wanted to be a writer. Oh, God. It was more, it was, I always knew I wanted to be a writer of some kind, but it was trying to come up with a definition of what the fuck that meant. Was it like Dr. Seuss at first? Like, I want to make these fucking oh, poems. Oh, God. I do not have an interesting answer to like the where I came from my David Copperfield story. It's like, mm. you know. Just, Wait, did you come from magic? <laughs> <laughs> I was the wrong David from an Copperfield. Egg. <laughs> I was born in the call, like David Copperfield. Was it um, midichlorians? Was that the thing? I'm not. I'm not no, going to do it. I'm no. going to midichlorian. Uh, no, uh, uh, I, I was one of those just luckiest boy in all the world. Like, I wanted to write, figured it out enough to, like, write something that got me something that got me my first job. And TV was a different animal then. It's a better animal now. There's so much more interesting stuff. But my first job, first show was Sex in the City. I was the staff writer on season one. Wow. Uh, and... I just like quacked like a baby duck whenever, you know, <laughs> like I knew how to do and, you know, I couldn't believe my how, luck. And how much freaky shit did none. you hear slash say in the room? It was, there was no freaky. It wasn't freaky. It was more just the chance to access like, you know, the type of things you were always told to curb because you, you can't do that on television. Mm. Slime. <laughs> um, that uh, that was suddenly fodder. 
you know, it was the kind of things that you saved for your plays were now to be put into a show. And mind you, I'm, I was 25 and had no business, like, I had no artistic, uh, you know, aesthetic at that point. Um, but I got to work with two incredibly talented people, Darren Starr and Michael Patrick King, and I watched them work, and it was like, oh, that's how you break a story. I want to do that for 50, 60 odd years. Mm. Um, and uh, it was also really fun being in something, knowing it was going to be a big deal before anyone would believe it. <laughs> like, my parents' friends were all like, you're going to give up working in a fabulous real estate firm with your father, which is my dad's business, he's a real estate <laughs> guy, uh, and he's great at it, uh, to go work on a porn show on cable, like... Every boy's dream. Every boy's dream. <laughs> but at the time, like, HBO wasn't, it was before, like, The Sopranos was, like, shot their pilot from our offices, was their production office, after we wrapped the first season. Wow. And so it was, you know, people only knew HBO from, like, reruns of The Beastmaster and First and Ten. <laughs> dream on if you're feeling artsy, right? We all loved Arliss. <laughs> Don't, don't fuck I'm not with a sports them. fan. I can't. I can't. I can't play. I couldn't play along with that. Um, and so home was back east. Home, home was back east. Yeah, I'm straight out of the box New York Jew. That's, am I supposed to look at you or like down the barrel? Uh, I keep like wanting to go like, it's hypnotic. Listen, you can stare wherever you like to stare. The people okay. will stare back at you. It's the black mirror. We know how this works. Okay. There are um, people out there. I, I strongly recommend uh, anyone watching this, turn off YouTube and watch, listen to this on audio. <laughs> oh, come uh, on. They would miss these glorious visages. <laughs> Um, I'm going to yeah. pronounce that so, wrong. I'm going to pronounce that different every time I say it from now on. Visage. Visages? No, that sounds dirty. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I got into TV and it was awesome. <laughs> it was a <laughs> <laughs> jump ahead. Jump uh, ahead. But yeah, very lucky first job to be something as awesome as Sex and the City and like just be able to say like, no, 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 there's this terrible drink. It's called the Cosmopolitan. You're all going to pretend to like it. <laughs> um, so I like that, that a decent chunk of your career seems to be like skittering over pop cultural touchstones. You know, like you go from here, you go from some Sex in the City, a little bit of time in the weeds. Time <laughs> out of pop culture. Well, I remember it was my first, it was my interview on Smallville season one. I worked on Smallville season one. Uh, great okay. writer's room there. And um, it was, I was in the, the, the meeting where we were just shooting the shit and saying like, hire me, look, tap dance and fart. Like they've already read you in these meetings. So now they're just trying to see, can I stand you? <laughs> and you um, be an awesome date for like four months. Yeah. If you're four, it would be like nine months of seven day weeks with mm. like three meals and styrofoam. Right, these are the uh, old days where you've got like 22 episode orders uh, as opposed to the worst. Uh, so uh, <laughs> then, but it, it was in that meeting that I realized like, oh wait, I have a reservoir of information. That trove is not a liability like it is on a date or on other meetings <laughs> that I can tap into. And I just were like, well, look, I'm not the, you know, encyclopedia a lot of other people are. Jeff Loeb, um, but but here's what I know about, you know, and, and just here are the books I read, here are the things I love, and here's how I think it can work into as a family drama and as, um, you know, uh, get, tapping into the teen stuff, and it was it was fun, and I'm like, I can actually, you, there's a gear. I, I, can, I can go th third. <laughs> Were you and, a nerd from, like, way back when? Like, what, what, what was your nerd oof, uh, entry point? I, I wish there was an easy answer, and I could just say, like, an eight. Um, I was uh, educated. I was so off, like, the, the scales of what... So I was educated in the Jewish parochial system. Mm -hmm. This is like deep Jew. Weren't we all? This is, this is like every morning went and put on our tefillin and, you know, yarmulkes all day, boys praying in the front, girls in the back. This is, this is, some, this is some serious thing. And, um, like, you know, if you had a crush on a girl, her name was Rivka. Uh, or Rifka tomorrow, if you were lucky, crazy. and yeah, no, <laughs> Rifka had it going on. So um, it was also my high school was a graduating class of twenty-seven people. Wow! So we didn't have like the cool people and the nerdy people and the jock and the, the there was like a jock <laughs> <laughs> running around beating everybody up. And there was a like a kid who was better at math. Like there was no, <laughs> we were all such nerds that it was only like the sliding scale among them. So like, you know, the, the tallest pygmy kind of analogy, mm. none of us were actually cool and we did have the presence of mind to know that. It was like the public <laughs> school kids had a chance at cool. We mm. just had the kids who were in double Talmud and the people who weren't in honors Talmud. Like that was, <laughs> that was, that was our echelon. So um, I, I came out of that just knowing like, yeah, no, this is just a world, like a world of nerd. And so um, was but, it? But we read, you know, we, we watched our movies and read our comics, but we didn't have society about it. We didn't talk about it much. It wasn't until I started like writing genre professionally that, you know, I was around people who like, oh, this was their, this was their dialogue. This was their lingua franca. Where it was like, oh, Chris Claremont, like talking about the artists and the writers and the inkers and the letterers that they loved. Whereas I just read them and didn't process them as literature. Were you a Marvel kid or a DC kid? Both. Uh, I was, I was Spider-Man, Batman. 
Nobody's you, both. It's I like didn't. But here's the thing: I, you're either... I didn't know enough people to say that. <laughs> like my my two friends who read comics, you know, would just they had, we had characters. It was sort of like it's like if you talk to a 16 year old today, and they, you know, you say like, hey, you know, what network do you watch your shows? And they're like, what's a network? You know, <laughs> like I watch Game of Thrones on my 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 iPad, and I watch you know This Is Us on my iPad. It all shows like, up on my box. Yeah. So like, what's an NBC? So I I had no real sense of I just knew Spider Man and Batman only hung out like in that special issue behind glass. <laughs> that you were never going to get to read. Which I own. Now. No. Yeah, uh, right. I have like the giant size crossover. But. As one must. Yeah. Why, why else uh, make money unless you're going to Unless you're going to spend it on shit. That you didn't get uh, as a kid. That I try to interest my kids. I actually broke, I broke the seal on that because like, my daughter was like, so when are these two going to ever meet? And I'm like, well, actually, we're going to do. Hmm. Yeah. And it wasn't like a well, actually. It was a, you're going to be excited. Yeah. Listen, you could either go to college yes. or you could read this book. <laughs> we're going to read this book. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I, so, I, but I you brought I, all that knowledge. It was basically you. like anything Spider Man did, like Marvel Tales, I even bought. Like, I was like, and I didn't mm. even, I was reading those not even realizing they were reprints from like 70s and 80s <laughs> before. I, that, I was just, I was reading in a vacuum, uh, but I loved it. And it was the start, you know, I remember when Batman Legends of Dark Knight happened, and it was, oh, wow, stories over four parts. And that's the early experience I had of like television structure. Of course, in television, you need to actually figure the story out by the, last act but wow. it, sometimes they did so, um sometimes television sometimes yeah, does sometimes television does too <laughs> but legend of dark knight rarely so uh it was it was pretty sp sporadic reading so all of this stuff would then come to play when you get on smallville because yeah. i'm assuming not much of this reared its head in sex in the city no 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 in sex in the city it was just like don't talk about batman don't talk about Batman. Like, just different don't pop your claws out loud different don't say powering. snicked just don't yeah they, <laughs> it's not gonna fly what is that made of? Adamantium, no. perhaps? It's not. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I, was, I was flexing different muscles. And look, the, the, <laughs> the best work, uh, my favorite work is where you get to flex them all. And Fair enough. Them together. So Smallville, how long were you on Smallville? One year. Uh, I did six episodes and uh, it was exhausting and hugs and kisses goodbye. And that show went on for like 15 more years. God bless. It did. It did. Yeah. Much, much like Supernatural is now. It's, it's the, amazing. It's the like, bedrock of that. The network. David Nutter pilots that go on forever. <laughs> God bless him. He's great. Love that guy. So after Smallville? Oh, was, uh, a little bit of... I would actually have to look up IMDb right now. <laughs> My right. head's a little spinny. But um, a little bit of just like, but you know, the, But the next big TV genre right. thing, I mean, you're trying to get me to heroes, so you can... I'm trying and you're resisting me at every turn. You can, you can get right there. I mean, so, for people who are here for the American Gods finale spoilers, we are taking the yeah, long, no, we're gonna get there. the slow you, boat. You, you just fucking wait. We're going to get there. We're taking this. Okay. So, yeah, so heroes. Now, it's, it, is, it, would be, it would be odd to not say that this thing was a phenomenon. When, it was, it would, yeah, that was. I mean, Save the Cheerleader, Save the World was this thing that I was working at Entertainment Weekly at the time, and nobody was really prepared for this to happen. And, yeah. At a place like UW, it's all about like forecasting what's going to be right. big, you guys. We know. We have the inside scoop. And kind of nobody knew because... Well, it was... I, I mean, mean I Lost had just happened. Right. Like and Lost so, happened, and, but Heroes was like, it's comic books, it's superheroes-ish. Yeah. We've never heard of any of them, but it, it could be a thing. It was, it was the beginning of recognition that everyone loves this shit and that the, the fallacy that this was for boys, young boys, and not something that, you know, the genre is for a subset. Uh, was never true and we the writers all felt that because we were people who all loved it someone <laughs> needs to do the panel of first season heroes uh, writing room it was an incredibly talented group everyone on there was a rock star and has gone on to rock star work uh, it's where I met Brian Fuller Jesse Alexander Jeff Loeb Joe Pekaski Aaron Colite <laughs> Natalie Chides like everyone was brilliant and people came on after were brilliant too but it was a unique room to be in um yeah, and it was fun. I mean, there was the day where you came in, like, oh shit, we're a hit. We were right. We we gambled, and it, we were. But there was also the sad, sad like writer knowledge of we were having this great moment, but Lost, which was such a brilliant show, was having a second season that people were shitting on, mm. and for no reason than because people like to shit on things because it isn't shiny and new. Right. And we're just sitting. There. I remember even like on the great day of like the first day ratings came, and it's like this time next year, dudes, we are going <laughs> to take it on the chin. People are going to be just like, whoa, they're doing the same tired shit or worse. They're changing it. Like, no, whatever. So, um, I mean, what is it like it being was inside of a room in the middle of that maelstrom? Where you're trying to just keep telling your story, the same no, story no, uh, that you. It was it was fun. It was it, we were. It was the first time we were all being rewarded for taking the ideas that you had 
been rewarded before for putting aside because that's movie stuff. We don't do that here. Mm. And just going, well, what if we did? What if he had a sword in his back? What if, what, what if we threw time travel in early? Like, what if, what if you just went fucking nuts and try and used your best ideas instead of sidetracked them? Uh, so that was really fun. It was exhausting because we were working with a network and a studio was NBC Universal who were very invested in the show. They weren't the like evil, terrible people. It was, it just wasn't something they ever made. Like they were owned by GE. <laughs> And, you know, Tim Kring would talk about, you know, created heroes and staffed that room. Uh, would talk about going to, like, GE things and being at a table with someone who was in charge of, like, washing machines. And they, they, someone once on a call with us, like, slipped out that they referred to acts of the show as entertainment units. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. This you know. unit was not fun enough, you guys. That's, Up the entertainment quotient of this uh, unit. That's got to have something to do with Mike Schur's free meal on, right? Like, uh, <laughs> so... Um, it, it was, we constantly had to just explain what we were trying to do to people who'd never seen anything like it, never worked on anything like it. Even serialized television was just hard for them because television broke down into procedurals mm -hmm. and soaps. And, right. the, and this was neither. And it would have been so, you know, they rightly, not rightly, they just by habit, by just sheer education, kept wanting the show where when are they going to all meet at the Hall of Justice at the end of episode two? Like, what, when does that happen? Mm -hmm. And like, have you ever read Bleak House? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we haven't. We were marketing people. Um, and so, so, how long were you on Heroes? I, I was on Heroes for a season and change. Season and change. Uh, I the second season was kind of cut in half by the writer strike. Mm -hmm. I was going off to work on uh, Show Kings that I'd written the year before, but was passed on by one regime and picked up by the next. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I, I helped out uh, a portion of season two, which is. Uh, a whole other TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> we will not get into the seasons where you were not there because I have my feelings about where. I, I, I actually haven't seen them. It's the downside of working on a show is you just you can't. <laughs> you can't watch it. You can't watch anything ever after. But then you move on to Kings, yeah. and I have sucked the dick of Kings almost every chance I get. Keep going. We got inches. I mean, <laughs> all the way to the back of the throat. No, I've been like, I, I've loved this show. That's how I met my Yeah, we first met time. the first time you reached out to... I reached right out on the it. Twitters because the Twitters actually occasionally bring people together and not tear them apart. But, and I talked to him about it because I'm a huge fan of this show. I mean, if you've never seen it... You, it you're, you and my mom are the biggest fans of the we, show. We are the, the, yes. the body of, of love. And, uh, but it's this modern day alternate history retelling of the story of, of King David and Silas and Goliath and all that stuff. It's a biblical, a modern yes. day biblical tale. And it tackles all kinds of themes of betrayal and love and respect and honesty and sexuality and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. um, while also being vastly entertaining. One hopes. <laughs> One, well, it was, it was so entertaining yeah. to me, I keep talking about it now. Please 10 do. years yes, since thank it's you. been canceled. It, yeah. Off the year. Well, yeah, you know. getting getting on ten, 10 years since we started it. Pretty ten much, years yeah. since you started. Um, and the one of the things that I gravitated towards it the most was our man Ian McShane. Yeah, he's the greatest. Uh, the it greatest. was the first experience I ever had writing a part for someone and getting that person. <laughs> it was just, you know, I imagined it like I had his voice in my head because who's not the biggest Deadfoot fan in the world? And uh, yeah, it was it was one of the craziest times of my life because it was just it was so fun and so rewarding making this show that I just, that was nonsense. I mean, it was bananas to even try it. Like, I want to do modern sh dress Shakespeare, but with the Bible, and there are certain cultural inevitabilities that are going to always play out no matter what timeline you're in, um, but it's not here, it's not now, and it's not the future. And by the way, don't tell that to Ian McShane. He still thinks, it's future America, it's fine, <laughs> just market it that way. And, um, and I, you know, and working with Ian McShane and Francis Lawrence directed it, and uh, the pilot in the first two episodes shot in New York. Uh, it was a wonderful time, and my life I never it was it was the first time I just really felt like creatively fulfilled being in charge of something and working with wonderful people and learning from them running a show the first time and going like okay I don't know a lot <laughs> that's fine I'm gonna ask stupid questions and lose credibility <laughs> which right, but, which I still do that's that's my shorting style made a great show like ultimately like whatever whatever gets you the good show whatever got me the good show and uh yeah it didn't work but NBC did let us finish it the way we wanted to Never killed the but like they you know a, a third regime came in and were just like you know just slaughtered everybody and uh, <laughs> but at some point I got a call going all right well look we're not going to kill your buddy we were shooting our like second to last episode mm -hmm. so just finish it out basically saying we'll declare a victory if it works but we're not going to tell anyone you're on um, which 
in network television land is considered fair game. <laughs> just, it's, we're gonna, it's a secret. It's a secret between you and your fans. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it was. A, it, I, I would do it all over again knowing it would fail. Um, so let's follow the McShane thread. The McShane thread. So I loved working with him. He was great. Uh, he, he, he decided to trust, like, me, you know, of all people. You know, he's coming off military. He's like, all right, so you're, th- I was, what, 34, you know. <laughs> and he's like, all right. You seem to know what you're doing, um, and uh, we got we and we continue to get on. Uh, we always kept in touch here and there, you know, the odd email, the odd how you doing, um, and then uh, cut to a series of adventures later. Brian Fuller of Hero Season One fame, who is a dear friend and as talented a writer as there is. Um, it's it's a shame he's not here because he's just a much better interview than I am. Um, Do not sell yourself short. Uh, he's also incredibly fine. tall, and me standing next to him, I'm like I'm like Master Blaster with him, but <laughs> See, I'm but, but I'm right top now, heavy. Right now, we're <laughs> yeah. like, hey, yeah. we're just two guys, just two guys. Out. No, uh, so uh, uh, but Brian uh, had been involved in American Gods. He'd met with Neil, uh, Neil Gaiman and Fremantle, and they were interested in having him uh, run it. And he was going into a surprise third season of Hannibal. Mm-hmm. Brian and I had met a million times between Heroes and Then, just catching up. Oh, I, we just root for each other. I mm-hmm. love his work. He's, we're, we're mutual fans. And But, the, you know, the idea of, like, it would be great to find something to work together on again was always appealing because we just liked, we always jived well and called each other, you know, what do you think of this kind of mm-hmm. relationship. And um, we just met, like, a week before, you know, Sugarfish La Brea. And, um, no, it was one in Beverly Hills. It's an important detail. Yes, which sugar which fish Which of the douchey LA franchise <laughs> fish places? Uh, it's the only, yeah, it's, we were at. And um, we, uh, he, he, you know, he called me up and was like, so I was going to do this and I need a partner and I, we, it would be fun. And I'm like, I, like, do you know, he said, do you know American Gods? And I'm like, do I know? You know <laughs> <laughs> do I know American Gods? You know, and of course, I, it was an easy thing to say. Even if I didn't, I would have been glad to do it with Brian, but I, I love that book. I've been waiting for that to come up for years. And um, yeah, so we, uh, we've been working on that. So cut to like a year and a half development on that. And we're working on um, the episodes with uh, the Zori sisters and Chernabog. Chernabog is the Slavic god of death. And we're imagining who would, should we write this for? And I'm like, you know, fucking kill this is Ian McShane. We're like, yeah, you know, when we get the script done and we're finally ready to send out an offer, we should do that. And cut to X number of months later, and we're finally ready to put an offer out. And so I, I call up his manager, who I've always kept up with, and um, she's like, I, th- I, th- I love this for him. Let me send it to him. And she, she's like, he's going to love this. He's going to love this. And she calls me back the next day. So he doesn't <laughs> love it. It's like, ah, shit. She's like, call him, though. He wants to talk to you. And he's like, he goes, Michael, love, I'm just not feeling the burn here, love. <laughs> he actually said that. It was the time of Bernie. Um, but what, what I got out of the conversation with him, and she said, call me after you talk to him, was th- the backhanded compliment is he doesn't like this role because he leaves. Mm. And he was kind of going like, what about this Mr. Wednesday? And uh, I'm like, does he want to play Wednesday? Fuck. And like we were down, you know, the rabbit hole of casting on that. Who was on the Wednesday list? I shouldn't say. Oh, come on. Nobody's No, watching. it's like, you know, we were going like crazy dreamland and right. we were going sort of like, what if he's, you know, just not, we were just all over the place. I mean, Will Smith, right? You wanted Will Smith for Wednesday? He was on a list. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there was more than one uh, Wednesday of color in just on the crazy list. I remember hearing at one point that Nicolas Cage... There was a point where was we, on the, he was on a list and he, we almost met with him. And I think that, to, to be honest, that was the like weird alley we were down. Because we kind of, you know, we were just in that moment of like, well, we'd have to rewrite significantly, but it's interesting. Mm. And we, we, you know, we were trying to make a weird show, so we just didn't... We, we considered a lot of things. I don't know if it ever would have happened. And he, he put the brakes on it first going like... I shouldn't do it just because I like it. I'm not this person that you... I, who knows what his process was, but it's flattering he liked it. <laughs> um, and I'll, I'll continue to root for that guy too. So then, uh, you know, I, when, when I got that call about Ian being interested, I said, give me two days for some shit to shake out and let's talk for real. And uh, things got very real very quickly. Mm-hmm. He signed on. We met. He hadn't met Brian Fuller. They got on very well. And uh, it was great to be working with him again because he came with a certain amount of trust. But I also, you know, you work with Ian McShane, you got to bring... <laughs> You, the, heat, the high heat. You, you got to be ready. You got to, yeah, you got to have the high, you, your, your scripts must be in line. Everything must be in line. He's, he's an old salt. He knows when things are right and things are wrong. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was this, this crazy year in Michael Green. Oh, Jesus. The year that begins in February with Logan. February, right? Yep. February, Logan. 
March American Gods. Then you get May with Alien Covenant, right? Yeah. And then what do we get after that? We're getting Blade Runner. Blade Runner 2049. Yeah. In October, and then Murder on the Orient Express. Yes, in November. In November. Uh, that 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 is a shit ton of stuff to to land in yeah. one calendar year. They are all after a fashion uh, adapted mm -hmm. in one way or another. What is your way into adaptation? Like, how, how do you approach? Is everything different, or is there a here's kind of my checklist when I'm approaching a thing that I'm going to? Um, it, it always you treat each one differently. Uh, it starts with, do you have a connection to the material, mm. and think hard about what that connection is. Um, because now you have two obligations. You have an obligation. Ooh, there's a siren. I know. Well, you're, that... you're spitting hot takes, my friend. Oh, I know. <laughs> They're coming for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you now have two obligations. One, to try to present to an audience of as many as possible mm -hmm. um, what it was that drew you to it. And then secondly, for those who've never heard of this, how can you give them an experience that approximates your own joy of this thing? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're dealing with the people who... That's almost the same thing. I should probably try that hot take one more time. You, you're, you have to service the fans as best you can, but again, you're only giving them, you can only give them your impression of it. Um, each one you come at differently because you, you don't know, well, you might be doing it by yourself or you're coming in with partners already. Uh, sometimes you're working with material that already exists. You're rewriting a script or you have a robust novel or you're working with a director who has a very clear vision. Mm -hmm. uh, I can, you know, each of those projects, um, had just a really different development history. Uh, some were clean, some were I was like the third person, you know, each one uh, had a, a different set of uh, exigencies that created my experience on it. And then also screenwriting. Mm -hmm. You go into every project hoping it's a marriage. Some you date for a while mm -hmm. and you leave acrimoniously. That was none of those. Some you date for a while and you leave like hoping the best for them and you got something from them and you hope they got something from you. And some you marry. Mm -hmm. and. So some of those I saw through to the very end, uh, you know, American Gods, I'm the showrunner, you know, Blade Runner, I, I wrote it and, um, you know, based on a uh, treatment that was written by someone else, um, uh, who's a whole other conversation who's fascinating, <laughs> I'm an adventure. Uh, but then I wrote that through the end, but then you give it over to, you know, a director and a production team that are astonishing and just be grateful for every minute of that, but you don't see through the details. And mm -hmm. uh, so each one you're, you're very different. Um, Whereas Murder on the Orient Express, I was the first and last writer on, and but I had a partner in Agatha Christie mm. uh, and in Kenneth Branagh. So. I hear she's a bitch. You know what? <laughs> I, I, at Neil Gaiman's expense, I'll, expense, I'll say, you know, it's just much easier when they're dead. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Neil, that's not true. Please, he, 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 so we, now, lo we love having him. Uh, please don't die, Neil. Please don't die, Neil. Please don't die, Ever. Neil. We he need can, I mean, 90 more novels from you, minimum. He's a member of like the Eldritch Gods anyway, so he's never going That's to That's true. Die. He will come back as Shogoth. Pretty much. The perturbed. <laughs> so while these are all hitting screens in a calendar year, I'm yeah. assuming that the writing of this was... <coughs> uh, it was ongoing. Yeah, no, look, it's years. a weird year by any stretch. Um, you work on things for a long time. I mean, uh, to be honest, I'm actually nervous talking about it. I haven't. <laughs> Um, this is the first time anyone's asked me, like, the sort of putting in that. I, I get into, you know, like, we've done a lot of American Gods interviews or did some Logan interviews. And, <clears throat> um, but the way, like, when I've talked to friends about it, you know, they're always like, so how'd you get away with that? And the way I've gotten away with it, it's like, it's, you know, you know if you want to get away with a murder, don't tell anyone you killed somebody. <laughs> uh, or, or, or as my father says, you know, they can't shoot who they can't see, you know. Mm. So I've kept a low profile and like, what I what I did for a long time. I was, I was working on television development and, you know, my MDB page is like a lot of people, like it suffers from long silences. And, but during those long silences, usually when you're getting the work done. And so there was some, a long period where I wasn't shooting things and I was just quietly like writing things for different people and, you know, writing my television pilots for Fox, who I owed them to at the time, who were great. But, you know, then you've got all that other time. And when you come off a network television show that does 22 episodes, Literally everything is easier. <laughs> so my dream for myself coming off the network television 22 episode thing was always, what if I could work 70% that hard and do better? And so I just took some quieter time and just, you know, and then, and then uh, you try to stack the train cars so they don't collide, but then sometimes I do. Uh, last year when we were in production of American Gods, uh, Fremantle and Stars are gonna hear this and get, <laughs> get annoyed. But, um, 
there were definitely times, you know, like get a call, like on work is needed on this production and yeah. that production. And, like there were three simultaneous productions of things that I was involved with that directly um, that would occasionally call at the same time. And mm -hmm. uh, what's the line in Enemies, a love story? It's like, I, I, I do the best I can. <laughs> <You know>? um, <laughs> But yeah, it, it's it's strange to talk about because I'm worried. I I don't want to try to get away with that ever again. It wasn't. Uh, it, it was it was hard. Uh, yeah, but, but it's not. I mean, but it was fun. Like you can't complain. Like, oh shit, I gotta stay up late and work on Blade Runner night. It's fun. It's play. <laughs> uh, screenwriting is always fun. The only bummer is deadlines. Well, I don't know anything about those. <laughs> I love I love the sound. The whooshing sound. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, the whooshing sound is delightful. Um. So. I know we can't talk very much about the future, the future, Conan, the future. We can't talk very much future. about it, despite the fact that... Which future? The American God's future? Or well, the, the American future? God's future, I mean, what's been the most heartening response you've gotten off of American Gods? Heartening? Heartening. Uh, it's been great. The response has been better than I expected, to be honest, because mm. the show's bananas. The, well, here's my new definition, bananas and bonkers. <laughs> like, bananas, unexpected, bonkers, you're just like, what? <laughs> Why would you do that? Um, the show is bonkers and we love it. Uh, what's been great is that the audience seems to be interested in what we were interested in about the show. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they've, they've taken it as sort of the pretentious art piece we wanted it to be. <laughs> but what's been most heartening is um, the acceptance of the cast who are wonderful and I adore. Uh, the, the, the acceptance of the need for diversity mm -hmm. in it. Um, you know, these are stories of immigrant tales and largely even even the main narrative is someone who's an immigrant into the world of magic, which is just even more heavy handed imagery for or uh, allegory for mm -hmm. what the show is about. And um, we're at a time where, you know, empathy towards immigrants is at a low, mm. a painful low. And um, people we, we we made the show under a progressive administration and then, you know, the, the, the American <laughs> voting public shit the bed and we ended up with mm. what we ended up with and um, the opposite yeah and uh, so there, there was a moment there where like all these immigrant stories suddenly became politicized which we didn't expect mm. right. really intend but somehow empathy became a political act mm. uh, which is a very strange and sad fucking thing <laughs> uh, to, to be thoughtful and you know, to, to have empathy for people is, is, is politicized so um, the fact that the audience got ahead of us on that and said it all for us was really heartening because people wanted that and respected that and they, they we didn't have to say anything for that message we just let the work stand and they read into it and um yeah more people watched it and could play along with that than we expected so we're we're thrilled now you got picked up for a second season relatively early on uh, yeah. By some show standards, for by us. By some shows. Yeah, <laughs> we were like, "Why is it taking them so goddamn long?" We've been doing this for two and a half years. We by have now. been doing this for two and a half years. Um, how, what what loose plans do you guys have? Like, how far ahead have you planned for what the show is going to plan? Be? Plan, um, plan. As long as I'm rich, we we have a bunch of different decision trees that we look at mm. and prune from time to time. Um, nothing I could commit to now. We we often talk about like. You know, we have one novel. It's not like Game of Thrones where you have a perspective now, seven. Do you, do you guys have Anansi we, Boys or no? We do not have Anansi Boys, no. Mm. Anansi Boys is owned by who the, who the hell knows. Um, I think we'd like to get it. I mean, we'd love to do more. Mm. Uh, but we can see this show, th that book, the novel American Gods, going three seasons, four seasons, five seasons. Mm -hmm. There's plenty to mine in between. There are times you want to slow down, and then there are times we're like, oh, this show's hard. Let's just get to the war. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we're, we're, we find ourselves very much enjoying the journey as the mm -hmm. cliche goes, but not without reason. It's, it's really fun to make. Um, it's fun to explore. It's fun to sit. We're not, you know, the rocket ride of a lot. Like it's, we just don't want to stampede to the clitoris and just, you know, <laughs> we kind of just want to sit and how about a kiss boy? Just take them up. Like we really love these deep dives into the characters, which are uh, fun and uh, celebrate the cast. This week on Fat Man on Batman, a stampede to the clitoris with Michael Green. Hey, Monty Python <laughs> reference. <laughs> Welcome here. And uh, what else do you have in the future? I know oh I know. there's a thing you can't talk about. Why the last man? Which <laughs> Brian K. Vaughn has talked about, so you're not... Here? In, not here. Okay. But he has in the world... He has. No, I... I mentioned I, that yes. there's a draft that you've written that at some point, if all of the planets align... There, there are a lot of planets that need to align. Mm. Uh, there's a draft uh, with FX that 
uh, they're a, a very smart group, mm. and I really enjoy it. Like, they, I'm glad that Brian K. Vaughan gave it to them and said, okay, this is the place to make it a home, and I came in after that because that's, mm. I think, the ideal place for it. Um, yeah, here's hoping. Now, there's, there's just a bit of development to do, but it's been, str like, strikingly pleasant. Everyone involved just wants, like, a really good version of that show. It would be somewhat ironic if you go into American Gods thinking that you would be making it for a during a progressive administration yeah to then have the opposite to then be making why the last man yeah about the one dude in a world full of women during this administration yeah it, it, but it could be released in the next one which will be the fucking like garden of eden of awesome because <laughs> the clap back from this to that will be i I'm want you to be extreme. right <laughs> Like the angriest like, show about the angriest people and oh the God. shiny, happy utopia that we all kind of wanted but never got. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, that's probably its own other show. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Why Last Man had to be very considered and reconsidered after mm -hmm. the election because it became about something very different to me. Yeah. I actually had a minute there where I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm the writer for this in this world, and I had to figure out that. Right. Um, but yeah, that's sort of we've we've got some future time before that's a thing. Gotcha. And so, I mean, Jesus, after this year, the year yeah, of Yeah, but right now it's all about American Gods making season two. Uh, if Murder on the Orient Express goes well, the, the detective goes elsewhere. Ah, uh, and Hercule Poirot yeah, yeah, travels. He, he, he does continue his travels. It was a great experience. Uh, Fox mm -hmm. was wonderful to work with. Kenneth and I Prado, cast his bananas. Yeah, cast his bananas. Maybe I met Ray. <laughs> wow. I met, yeah, I met all kinds of people on that. It was cool. Um, <laughs> No, it was, it, was, it was a great experience. I mean, as, as much as those things are fun to, like, cast and recast, I'm like, can we just put all these people back and just put them in another, can, can we on a Greek island somewhere? Can we unkill them? Yeah. Just <laughs> give them new fussy British names. <laughs> that would be kind of great, though. Like, yeah. a, a repertory of people you're going to kill every movie, but yeah. we'd like just them keep, enough. Just, they're just, fuck it, they're not whatever. dead this time. This time, no mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that was uh, Judy Dench's line. Let's do this again in another movie, but this time I'll wear the mustache. Ah, well, she has all of the awards, so she can say she whatever can say she anything likes. she wants. Yeah. Um, dude, uh, but well, yeah, it's yeah. fucking awesome. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Any 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 things out you the world besides? You plug me more than I deserve. I. Well, uh, it's because I like you. You deserve a good um, plugging. I, I'm I'm good. I'm I'm shamed by it. <laughs> everything you say. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, awesome. Watch Deadwood if you haven't. <laughs> watch Deadwood. And dude, it's I... Really, or watch it again if you... It, it, very few shows want to rewatch as much as that. That when we first met... Oh, and, American Gods. And you I remember, well, that show. Probably watch it. Whatever. But we had talked about when we first met, sitting down, I'm like, what are the stories from the King's world that you want to keep telling? Hmm. And you were like, well, here's where season two would have gone. Here's yeah. where season three would have gone. Here's all the dreams that I had that got crushed. Yeah. And I said, well, dude, there's a world in which you could absolutely make a comic book of Kings that I think people would read. I'm going to put it out there to the world at large, publishers if, who may or may yeah, not. Yeah, if, 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 if 40,000 people were like, I buy that, I don't know. I, I, the, the barometer for success you know in what? comics is so... It's less a barometer for success. It's, you can't pay me enough to like, revisit a failure. <laughs> it has nothing to do with money. It's more just, it hurts too much to like, <laughs> go back and, you know, I have those stories. I love those stories, but they're kind of, you just... Flee, flee the fire. Scabbed over. It's sad. I, I wish I could have told them in uh, mm. grander fashion. Alas. All right, boys and girls, that will be it for is that. This it? Is that what doing a podcast looks like? This, this is what doing a podcast is. We talk for a bit and then we just end it abruptly. And like unceremoniously. <laughs> unceremoniously. You can like no callback joke like at the end of a stand up bit? Uh, no, that would apply far too much preparation. All right, so I'm just. And actually, you could just put that down, but I will then say goodbye to the boys and the girls. That's been this episode of Fat Man on Batman. I'm Mark Bernardin. This is Michael Green. Stay tuned next week for another same fat time, same fat place. I'm not used to saying all this because Kevin usually does the heavy lifting. And he says go to smodcast.com. And I say or youtube.com to Kevin Smith. But it's weird. I'm doing all the work. Come back, Kevin. I miss you. I love you. You're my. I'm right here. <laughs> I'll be right here. Out. <laughs>